Not everybody was born to be a leader. Not everybody was designed to be a leader. We always want to think how we want things to look like. We always want to have an opinion as to how we want things to look like until it's time to take action. You, Chris Anno, can you put everybody together and have them speak as one voice? Hell no, you can't. Sako, can you put everybody together and have them speak as one voice? No. Cho Ayaba, can you do that? No. John Baakoro, can you do that? Hell no. Do you understand what I'm saying? None of you guys can unite. Just four guys. You cannot even put yourselves together and speak as one. And yet you want independence. No, you guys are young. You do not know. Let me talk to you. Talk to this and quit this. Grow up, man. You guys should grow up. Grow the hell up. And you go out there and you put explosives and have young people die and you cannot unite and speak and fight for them. What kind of future, what kind of nation do you want to build with this? Hello guys, welcome to another interesting session. Today, we will be analyzing another fascinating video. It's going to blow your mind. And it's actually the reason why we called an end to the Ambazonian War on the 11th of February, 2024, for those below the age of 40. We believe that we can achieve peace, unity, freedom, and prosperity in Cameroon without violence. If you are above the age of 40, and you believe in this initiative, we welcome you. If you are above the age of 40 and you think the only way is through violence and that every nation on earth has fought a war to achieve their independence, then this video is not for you. We are about to witness the impediment that is eating up our people the root cause of every problem that we are facing today as English speaking Cameroonians in Cameroon. Take a look. This is a jeopardy on the life of the people of Guza. And for the ADF therefore to come up again and say they will shut the Guza market onto further notice this is double jeopardy. And that one now is a shot on our own leg. It's a thing we cannot afford. So I'm using this platform to urge the management, to urge the command chain of the ADF and the management or the, uh, the cabinet of the AGOC to reverse course on this decision with immediate effect. Because it will not, it will not be helpful for our liberation movement. It will rather be counterproductive. Oh, yes, comrade, I can see your comment. Yeah, I can see your comment. You're asking me, Mr. Akuro, why are you saying this here? Why don't you reach out to your brother, comrade uh, Cho Ayaba, to discuss this, these things in the background? Well, I know comrade Cho Ayaba actually watches uh, my shows he generally watches them and of course you find out that i have good collaboration with almost everyone i should say but everyone in this liberation movement that's why you find out some of the shows are, are even broadcast too on the acn tv of the egg of sea now responding to your question head on i've made several attempts to reach out to comrade cho ayaba he for several months today he neither picks the calls, nor returns the messages, nor even behaves as if he has sinned. And the latest attempt were yesterday, February 16, 2024. I called Comrade Cho Ayaba around six times. Of course, I could see him on all the time. I called around six times. He did not pick. I left him a voice note expressing the concerns that I'm expressing here right now. I don't see any indication he has played it. I left text messages to follow up to tell him I want us to discuss this issue. He has never reacted. Let me say this. You see, while we are fighting a despotic system, we have to avoid 
functioning like those despots that we are fighting against. If you see somebody like Kabaye Yege Jibril in La Republic du Cameroon, take but the pulpit, because some they took the pulpit of the, the National Assembly of La Republic du Cameroon to raise issues he was expected to raise with the president of their country, Mr. Paul Bia. But he couldn't get the access to Mr. Paul Bia, so he spoke in the public. So if I'm unable to get to Comrade Cho Ayaba, with whom we have been functioning at the, at the level of leadership in this liberation movement, then I should be able to address the concerns right here. Because if you can't talk to me on one-on-one, -on -one, at least you'll be able to listen to me here. No attempts to be derogatory to anybody. But we can't transform ourselves into, should I say, we can't build a wall around ourselves. And then we expect that we have to work together to liberate a country. That really has never worked anywhere. It wouldn't work even within our own framework. And again, don't forget, we are at war, folks. When we build those personality cults around us and tell ourselves, oh, I'm so supreme, you need to talk to my support, you need to talk to my this and that, you forget. Sometimes someone can be calling you for your own same safety because of who we are fighting against. This is something that we must bear in mind. So I want to come out of that particular subject matter by reiterating here that the decision to shut down the Guzan market is wrong, absolutely wrong. And I say it, I mean, in very absolute terms, it is wrong. And I want to make clear, it will lead to resistance because the population will not accept it. We can't hide behind the, the fact that we are saying the phone of Guzan uh, 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 participated with La, with La Republic. The phone of Guzan could not have any power to stop La Republic the Cameroon forces from coming to do what they had done in Guzan. As I cited before, they have done that elsewhere. But the people took different strategies to punish La Republic du Cameroon. And of course, the ADF in Bui, in working with, uh, the, with uh, the Bui Unity Warriors, are already punishing La Republic du Cameroon. Yesterday, as I'm talking, 16 February 16, I could I got in uh, inf information from the Bamenda General Hospital about body bags of La Republic du Cameroon soldiers being brought in from Bui. That is the punishment we should give them. We should not punish our own people. Those who are on the field, who are carrying those sticks to defend the community, know exactly how they will punish La Republic du Cameroon for this despicable act. But if we turn against the population, I assure you, it will be met with resistance. The resistance will be very stiff. So let's not go down that route. I know we are better than this. Of course, I know that uh, Comrade Cho Ayaba does understand some of these things. When we were able to talk, we generally talked about the need to put the people first. So I think he will remember, and I guess that watching this show, he will definitely go back to the audio that I dropped him to understand exactly what I proposed. I want to add okay, so right there, I just want to start by saying that a weak team that is united will always beat a formidable team that is disunited. You can have a legitimate cause but if you are disunited, the world will never listen to you. You will never win and you can never garner the support of others. And this is the reason why we put an end to the Ambazonia War of Independence for Cameroonians below the age of 40. You can never go anywhere with disunity. This is exactly what these leaders have been doing. If... John Mba Akoro, that has one of the largest platforms that advocates for this Ambazonia War of Independence, cannot reach Ayabacho for months on phone, then who else will? And, and, and who is this individual that is unreachable? And this is what I always say, like, if you don't have a net worth, of at least 20 million US dollars. You should be on your phone all the time because opportunities are knocking on your door. And if you are fighting a war 
of this magnitude and an activist of this status cannot reach you where are you guys going with all of this do you understand what i'm saying and young people fellow cameroonians fellow english speaking cameroonians i want you to pay attention to this not everybody has the skill to be a leader i'm saying this because as a teenager i've been leading people it takes a different kind of skill to lead people and we underestimate the strength that it takes to mobilize human beings and i'm saying this to all nation builders our team and the rest of the people that are working with me on this mission of empowering our nation economically that it, it takes a different kind of skill to put people together you understand what i'm saying and we cannot have this unity because it would take us nowhere and if you have this level of disunity among yourselves i don't encourage anyone to follow this kind of movement i don't care how legitimate the cause is if people are this disunited it is better you stay with french speaking cameroonians than follow individuals that are disunited because they will ruin your lives if they achieve independence you will all be in pain under the leadership of individuals who act think and respond in this manner all of you both those who disagree or agree with me if you've reached out on whatsapp you realize that i respond i take the time out of my busy schedule to talk with you listen to you even if you disagree with me and that is the new breed of leaders that we want in africa that we want in cameroon that communicates that care because when you don't respond it indicates you do not care you don't give a damn about what people are going through you don't give a damn about the grievances of the people you don't care about their struggles i speak to everyone because i care about our people do you understand what i'm saying what could be the reason why you will not pick up your phone and some of us have taken this habit to be that i am big that is why i don't respond no you weak maybe you don't know how to communicate you don't know how to lead you don't love you don't care that is the reason why you won't pick up the phone and i want to let you know picking up your phone doesn't mean that I, I i am at that level that you should minimize my time or minimize me or minimize the effort that i took to let you into my space and speak with you and if that is the impression you have in your mind because i pick up your phone because i pick up the phone and answered your call then you have a small mind And if you think that not responding to somebody's call indicates that you're big, then you have a small mind as well. That is leadership. It takes skill. It takes competence. It takes care. It takes different kind of energy to lead people. That is why you guys are demanding independence. Can you lead a nation with this kind of spirit? Hell no. I will never encourage any Cameroonian to be in a nation led by people that cannot communicate with each other, that cannot act as one. This is my challenge to you guys. Find a way to mobilize yourselves and speak as one. Because that is what the government in Yaoundé is doing and that is why they are respected around the world. Does it mean all of them agree on every policy? No. But do they unite? Sure, they do unite and speak as one when it comes to the nation. And some people think, oh, we are already an independent nation and we are going out there to represent ourselves as a nation. Is a nation like this? Stop deceiving yourselves and stop deceiving the people. Okay? It is one thing to have dreams. It's another thing to have that dream become a reality. They said if wishes were horses, even beggars will ride. 
you guys quit the social media platforms that you are on. There's a lot of groundwork to be done. Go fix yourselves and then you can come address a nation or lead a nation. Stop wasting people's time. Time is very precious. Stop wasting people's money. Stop wasting people's resources. Stop wasting people's lives with this kind of disunity. You cannot build anything on this. And so those of you who come under my comment section and you begin to write comments, go fix this problem. This is my challenge to you. Let me see all of these leaders come together as one people. Even if it's not for independence, just be one. I want to guarantee you, until you guys dissolve the tribes that exist in Northwest and Southwest, forget about building any community that is sustainable. Dissolve all of these tribes. Europe, at some point, dissolve the tribes. As you carry them to think it is your culture, it is your biggest impediment. Dissolve this idea of disunity, the spirit of disunity that has eating you guys up and i'm letting you know guys the next seven years will be like this the next 20 years will be like this the next 30 years will be like this when people have crossed 40 with this kind of thinking there's no way for them to change most of them will end up like this and that is why you stop wasting your time and your money after a movement with leaders that act behave and think like this is this making sense? It is that simple. So read my lips because the next 10, 15, 20 years will be like this. If I want to work for a company and I realize that the leaders are just divided, I won't even send in my CV. And that is why not everybody is competent to build a business. And that's why most people are employees because when they are employees, they think that they can run the company. They think that they can run a nation. It takes different kind of skill. It, it is one thing to be eloquent and express yourself as a journalist. Uh, it's, it's one thing to have the aspiration to lead. It's a completely different thing when you are out there in the trenches leading, putting people together and speak as one voice. That is why most of us travel abroad, we end up as employees. Some of you have probably started businesses and failed. It takes different kind of skill to lead people. Not everybody is gifted with that. Yes, it can be learned, but it takes different kind of skill. And sometimes you are born with it. And, and I guarantee you guys in the next 20 years, you guys will watch what will come out of CSDP. What will come out of na nation builders? Because why? There is a leader. There is a way to put people together. There is a way to articulate and motivate people. The language is different. The way you speak, the way you act is different. You will start seeing the effects of those who will come out of nation builders in the next five months. You will start feeling their effect in that nation. I guarantee you that. Let's keep listening. Mr. Nash, is he now actually confirming to us that the international community or the United Nations or whosoever is concerned, they are all liars and they cannot attest to the truth because he is saying that if it is in the, uh, in the 1961, it will not work. So is he confirming to us that the world has become liars and cannot tell the truth? That's one. Number two, I want to find out from him. He has one question. And Just he has requested for one question. So he has requested for one question, please. Yeah, Mr. Nash, respond to that, please. Yeah. Hey, guys, you have to remember, I'm 74 years old. I can only remember one question at a time. <laughs> no, yes, go ahead. Serious, yes, go ahead. seriously, seriously, on the on the on the liars. No, um, you know, civilization moves on. History moves on. Events move on. The events of today have nothing to do with the events of yesterday. So, no, I wouldn't say that that it's liars because people in 1961 may decide something. But by 2023, that looked at totally different. So, you know, that's why I'm saying that, you know, we can we discuss history, go on and on and on, write letters back and forth. But the key is 
to look at today and how can Southern Cameroonians gain their full rights today in 2023, not in 1961. So it's that clear. We are not in 1961. We are in 2023. I love this because this is my train of thought. That we are in a new dispensation. And we should address and solve problems based on what we see today. And some people think we had this union in 1961 and it ought to be like that forever. I mean, who does this? Do you understand what I'm saying? Who does this? Even you in your own personal life, have you been consistent with everything you said to yourself 10, 20, 15 years ago? No. You've changed a lot. Based on the circumstances around your life, based on your experience, based on everything, you've changed many decisions that you made about your own life, for your own life. The only constant factor in life is change, and it affects everything. You cannot make a contract 60 years ago and want the terms of that contract to be the same in 2023 a lot has to change i will not even believe anyone that said i make this contract 60 years ago and it's still the same today no it changes laws changes the precedent changes i mean we were talking about the time of aijo right that is when all of these laws or this union actually was instituted we have president Paulia. Who came when this union was uh, already changed from the Federal Republic of Cameroon to the United Republic of Cameroon? That is when President Paul Bia came to power. Everything ought to be the same, guys. It ought to be the same and never changes. And that is why there is no valid claim to this case. And that is why it's a complete waste of time, disunity, and everything that we are seeing. We are in a new dispensation. Sometimes you had the plan to have maybe five children. But when you get married, it changes. You said, okay, we will have probably two. At some point, you guys decide, okay, let's have three. Life is possible because change is the only constant factor in life. You were once a child and now you are grown. You are an adult. You don't speak anymore as a child. And this is what I'm saying. The new Cameroon that we are building is predicated on the vision that we are crafting today. Not a vision laid by God, Jin Dinka, in 1985. It is a vision that we came up with this dispensation so that we can live to see a vision that we were inspired by become a reality. Do you understand what I'm saying? Young people, you should not be following a vision crafted by an old man that is 93 years old today. You should be following a vision that is fresh, full of passion, energy, dynamic, and the leader is agile and ready and competent to make sure that you achieve this dream and it provides freedom, unity, peace, and prosperity for all Cameroonians. That is the vision. There is no Anglophone or Francophone. There is no Batibu or Basa. There is no Bamelike or Bakwiri. There is Cameroon, there is the Republic of Cameroon. That is the nation that we believe in. There is no Northwest or Southwest. There is no Central Region or Northwest. There is the Republic of Cameroon. That is the nation that we unite under. Do you understand what I'm saying? They've used all of these demarcations to divide us for years. They've divided us among tribes. And to dissolve this is a problem for them. To say that is not enough, they've divided us between Northwest and Southwest. Now they've divided us between English-speaking Cameroonians and French-speaking Cameroonians. 
I just want to say we dissolve all of these barriers and this dispensation. We are Cameroon. We are the Republic of Cameroon. That is exactly what it is right now. And that is the foundation that we are building on. For seven years, you guys cannot unite. You want us to follow you and keep listening to all of this? Nah. Nah. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? No to this. Young people, do not follow this. Cameroonians will have their mind intact to not follow this. And I repeat again, I would rather prefer you stay with the Francophones that are united than stay with Anglophones that are disunited. This will take you nowhere. It will waste your time and waste your life. I don't care what you think or what you say. With this, you go nowhere. And for those who have been calling me, I want us to be thinkers and not just people who regurgitate words that come out of John Ba Akoro's mouth. I want to hear your thoughts because most of you come to me, you keep repeating what you listen on his news media or what he broadcasts on a daily basis. Talking about uh, America got their independence from Britain. Uh, talk about Scotland and the UK. W what do you think as an individual? What are your own examples based on your thinking? I want independent thinkers. I don't want you to say things that I, will, I can listen to a news media out there and I hear the same regurgitated words. Uh, because when you hear me speak, I'm thinking. I'm not just talking like an advocate of the government. I'm talking as a Cameroonian that is seeing problems in my nation and want to stand up and be that change. And my thinking is based on my independent thought, based on my research, based on the knowledge that I have derived after exploring and looking at what works around the world. That is what I bring to the table. Let me hear you speak like an individual that has their own independent thinking. The number one thing I want you to do is go look at the GDP of all those nations that they are using as examples. Scotland, Eritrea, Sudan. The nations that they secede from are wealthier today than the nation that seceded. Go look it up. And if you look at the current world order and where the world is going to today, there's no place for disunity. If there's anything that we want, it's unity. The worst is an African nation that is advocating for cessation. It is a terrible idea, given our level of development. Do you understand what I'm saying? was to determine whether the people of Namibia wanted to remain under South African control or become an independent nation. The vote was held on March 21, 1990, and the overwhelming majority of Namibians voted for independence. So the key word here, Ambassador, is the United Nations propose. Uh, is that would not would that not be a good round for Ambazonia, which means Ambazonians then maybe get some godfathers who can go after the United Nations, maybe lobby the United Nations to make that proposal. Considering that we have been fighting for close to seven years now, the Republic of Cameroon rejects dialogue. The Republic of Cameroon thinks that they can kill everybody to submission. So, in the case of Ambazonia, wouldn't there be the need for the United Nations to propose propose such a referendum? The, uh, the key word, I actually agree with you, absolutely, is united. That is one of the reasons that I have been so adamant in encouraging the community to be united in its point of view, because to get to the point that you are mentioning right now, it is so critical for the community to advocate to the United Nations and to allies around the world 
And yes, even to the government at Yaoundé, what the community wants. Because I, I guarantee you that the government in Yaoundé would pay attention much more if the southern Cameroonian community comes to them with a united voice. Um, and it goes to the United Nations with a united voice. And it goes to the governments of the United States and the United Kingdom and Canada and Germany and the European Union with a united voice. That is why that is the first critical element because before the community can take step one, it has to speak with a united voice. So that is it. They listen to this and walk out of these rooms and come back on their platforms and keep talking. You guys need to take a break, go fix yourselves, learn how to speak as one or quit this all together. You cannot be wasting the lives of innocent civilians while you are divided or disunited. He said, you can't go before the government of Cameroon and even speak as one. Talk less of coming to the United States or all of these European nations and say, we want you guys to help us when we will receive different letters with different propositions, with different ideas, and we don't know what to believe. Do you understand what I'm saying? And you want the United Nations to help you. You want these foreign nations to help you. You think, oh, the United Nations has an agenda. The white people have an agenda. That is why they don't want to support you because, oh, they don't want to uh, think about their sins. They don't want to think about their past. That is why they don't want to support you. All of this disunity, is it the fault of the president of Cameroon? Is this the fault of the UN? Is this, you see, take responsibility. You, you understand what I'm saying? You guys got to learn how to take responsibility for your actions. Fix yourselves. The problem is not the Republic of Cameroon. The problem is not the United Nations. The problem is not the United States of America. The problem is not Canada or UK. The problem is you. You guys have to learn how to fix yourselves. Unite and speak as one voice. If you can't do that, stop wasting people's time. Stop misleading young people to go lose their lives. Stop this. Quit. Not everybody was born to be a leader. Not everybody was designed to be a leader. We always want to think how we want things to look like. We always want to have an opinion as to how we want things to look like until it's time to take action. You, Chris Anu, can you put everybody together and have them speak as one voice? Hell no, you can't. Sako, can you put everybody together and have them speak as one voice? No. Cho Ayaba, can you do that? No. John Baakoro, can you do that? Hell no. Do you understand what I'm saying? None of you guys can unite. Just four guys. You cannot even put yourselves together and speak as one. And yet you want independence. No, you guys are young. You do not know. Let me talk to you. Talk to this and quit this. Grow up, man. You guys should grow up. Grow the hell up. And you go out there and you put explosives and have young people die and you cannot unite and speak and fight for them. What kind of future, what kind of nation do you want to build with this? What kind of leadership team can you be with this? I remember a pastor called me a couple of days ago and we we're having this conversation. He was trying to justify war. How can you even justify war with this kind of leadership? And, and he went on and on and we had this conversation. And then at the end of the day, I told him, I maintain my stance. I'm not for anyone dying. And all these ideas that people have in their minds, that wars have been fought. So if wars have been fought throughout history, you ought to fight a war. Really, what can you learn from that war and use a different strategy to solve problems in 2023 than fighting a war? You think because we fought wars in the past and indicates that that justifies war? Really? 
the Jewish people that were killed in Germany and that have been targeted around the world, what war have they fought to be that successful in America? They use their brain. They use their creativity and talent. The Jewish people in this nation are the wealthiest group of people. Yet they are a minority. Did they fight war? Did the Jewish people fight wars in Germany, in Europe, and in America to become successful? We ought to fight wars. Wars is the cheapest form of conflict resolution because it requires no strategy. It requires no effort to think creatively. That is why you result in brute force and violence. Do you understand what I'm saying? And when this pastor talked to me and we had this conversation and he went on and on. And at the end of the conversation, I maintained my stance. And he said, oh, we are pastors. At the end of the day, we can still talk. We can still speak. We are one. We are friends. I say, hell no. I don't play the kind, this kind of cheap politics. I don't play this kind of cheap politics. If you have this kind of erroneous thinking that will lead to people losing their lives, I'm not your friend. I have no business with you. And I was dead on with him. Don't call my phone. I'm not your friend. You don't play this kind of game. And it's this kind of cheap politics that people think someone has a, a dangerous thought in their mind that will lead to people losing their lives. And they think at the end of the day, it's just politics. Let us be friends. Hell no. Is this kind of cheap politics that they are siding and saying, oh, Jua was arguing with another individual. At the end of the day, they got into one vehicle and came back. No, I will trick than walk with you. I will trick than walk with an individual or get into a vehicle with an individual that thinks like this. I have no association with you. This is the new breed of Cameroonians. And old folks, I'm telling you, especially those in the diaspora, uh, when we put everything together, I I'm telling you guys, if you don't catch up very fast, you'll be 60, 70, 80. You guys will get it tough in our hands. And I'm telling you, if you don't get your act together, we are willing to forgive and build and think strategically and solve these problems. But if you continue doing this to these young people and letting innocent people lose their lives, you will have no place in our community. I just want to guarantee you that. You have no place in our community. Remember my words. All right. If you like this video, you're going to like this other episode and you can watch it by clicking right here.